In this video, I'm going over the five things that has happened in the past two years with Windows 10 that makes it just kind of keep getting worse and worse and what people are moving to from Windows. So recently this week, something got discovered that affects 800 million Windows users. And it's the fact that since update 1803, which if you're not in the O, oh, know that that's a feature update. 1803, I think, came out in April of 2018. So in April of 2018, April, March, right in there, 1803 came out. And then later that year in October, 1809 came out. And then recently in April of this year, 1903 came out. So the last three major updates to Windows 10 has not had a registry backup. So when you go to do system restore, it doesn't actually restore the registry, which is crazy. So a lot of people are asking, hey, why is that? And Microsoft apparently made a conscious decision not to back up the registry to save space. And even though in the logs it said, yes, this is happening successfully, it shows, hey, that it stored zero bytes, which is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And this just marks up one more thing that I'm just extremely dissatisfied about Windows, um, but this was a major thing that happened this week uh, that kind of came out about Windows 10. Now, also, if you notice, back in the early days, in 1709 and prior, 1709 is kind of my favorite version of Windows 10, uh, be, mainly because I could customize and really remove a lot of the bloat directly out of the box. I would do custom uh, WIM images on my actual loads of Windows 10, and I still do that to an extent. Uh, however, 1803 in post versions, it's become a lot more difficult, and also, I find that many of the applications are actually loading after I take them off. Like I'll remove like a suggested app and all of a sudden it'll pop back up in my start menu. And that's kind of ridiculous that I have to go through all this. Now, a lot of people are just so, well, use the long-term branch or use the enterprise version. And this isn't a solution. Those are made for businesses. They're made to go on domains. And of course, they're not going to have any of this. The fact that Microsoft is allowing this to happen to residential users and doing it on purpose is just messed up. It's like installing malware on a person's PC. Back in the day, in pretty much any Windows version, that's just something that happened at a manufacturer level. When you go to buy something like Best Buy, you take it home, it was in like an Acer or an HP computer, you'll open it up and it came with all this preloaded crap. And then you'd hire someone like me to come in and take it out. That was how I got my start in the IT field back in the early 2000s, was doing that. And the fact that Microsoft is doing this right now is ridiculous. And even when you remove it from someone's computer, it can still repopulate and it will repopulate after when you do you do your new feature updates. It, it's just ridiculous. I, I'm just beside myself of how crappy this is just because that's how I got my start was removing this stuff and cleaning up people's computers so they can have the stock experience. And now Microsoft has just said, you know, we don't care about our users. We don't care about their performance. We don't care about their privacy. And that's messed up. And right in the same realm as privacy is concerned, almost any new feature update, you'll notice that you pretty much have to use your Microsoft account. Yes, I know that the local account option still exists, but you have to jump through hoops to use a local account. You have to have like free password questions. You have to do all this. It's much easier just to punch in your Microsoft account and away you go. So many users are opting to do that. So they're almost pigeonholing everyone to create a Microsoft account so they can actually back up all your you know, back wallpaper and have all that information and sync your account to their cloud. And I, I really dislike this approach greatly because one, there's certain things I don't want them knowing. So uh, as an example, when I synced my Microsoft account to a new Windows install on a virtual machine I did, I noticed that it pulled in my background. It pulled in other settings and things that was sitting in their cloud. And that is, some people would say, a nice feature. But at the same time, when you're really kind of forcing your users to go in that direction, 
I don't think this is a, a good thing. I think only bad things can come from this, and it's something that you should probably be cautious about. And this also kind of brings me to every single update since 1803 has been considerably worse. We're talking 1809 deleted a whole bunch of people's files. Uh, 1903, the no, most recent one in April, has blue screened tons and tons of computers. So much so, Microsoft had to go back to the drawing board and say, hey, it created its own program that runs prior to uh, 1903 update happening. You'll actually see it in your notification bar. It'll pop up and it'll be a nice little list that says, hey, uh, we're getting things ready for you so we can update your computer uh, whether or not you like it. So it's, it's ridiculous that that's happened. And with that, uh, with the forced updates, the forced updates have gotten worse. It's like they completely are ignoring the community. People are saying, hey, we hate your forced updates, and Microsoft's solution to it is, okay, you hate it? Well, we're just going to amp it up a little bit then and make you do more forced updates. It's just gotten far worse. Like I made a video directly, and I'll link it up here as well, about delaying Windows updates, going ahead and taking it from the targeted semi-channel to the non-targeted, going ahead and delaying feature updates 365 so you can push it out a year if you want. You go ahead and delay security updates like seven days so when that first day happens and you have first day bugs, it doesn't break your systems. These types of things I think everyone should do and yet Microsoft's defaulting everyone, and they're making these options harder to get to. I noticed in 1903, a lot of these advanced options disappeared for a little bit, and then all of a sudden they reappeared, and they're a little more buried each time to get to them, to set them, and that should not be the case. They should be right there so users can make their decisions, and it's just so bad how uh, Microsoft has ignored all its users and completely gone out of its way to screw everybody over. I don't understand it. It's like they want to fail. They're like, hey, we're king of the world. We have 80 plus percent of the market share. What can we do to screw this up? And then they continually charge towards doing just that. I don't understand it. As a lifetime Windows user, I recently switched back in November to Linux, and I've been making Linux videos on this YouTube channel. And the whole reason why that whole switch to Linux happened was because of Microsoft. It wasn't Linux. It wasn't Mac. It was Microsoft screwing up and doing all these things. They're the win ones that pushed me to do this. So thank you, Microsoft, I guess, because this is what I do almost full time now. I mean, it's definitely more than a part time job for me at this point. And I'm doing it three days out of the week and gone part time at my full time gig to do just YouTube videos over Microsoft, over Linux, over Mac, all these things. So when it comes to Windows, definitely be looking at your options, whether it's Mac. Let's say you need a lot of Microsoft Office and you are a big Adobe Photoshop user or a Adobe Creative Suite user. Mac's probably going to be your go-to just because those are the programs you have to use and you've been using them for decades. I understand that. You might want to think about looking at a Mac. They are hell of expensive and I don't personally recommend them. But right now in the state of Windows, I almost say that's a better thing. I'd rather chunk down a couple thousand dollars than to deal with this mess. Um, especially as someone that has to continually stay productive because, you know, if you're at home or you're an entrepreneur or a, a solo out there, you definitely need to use your computer and chances are you're not using an enterprise version of Windows 10. And as such, you might think about switching to Mac if you use those options. However, let's say you're not a huge Microsoft Office or even an Adobe Creative Suite guy. Well, you're pretty much a great candidate to switch to Linux. Now, me personally, I really liked Photoshop. I really liked a lot of these things, but I wanted to see what Linux had to offer. So I went out of my way and learned alternatives instead of just jumping right into Mac because uh, I didn't like a lot of one, the expense, and two, the closed ecosystem. And I didn't really like, I didn't think their future would be much brighter than Microsoft's. So that's why I looked at Linux. I said, this has the greatest chance for growth opportunities. 
And I really, really like what's happened with the desktop because I tried Linux three or four years ago and I didn't like it. And now that I've actually been on it for almost over six months now, I absolutely adore Linux desktop because of all the options it gives me. But it's confusing as hell, especially for a new user. There's a lot of things about it that, you know, you install a, one of these distributions like Ubuntu or um, there, there's a variety of them out there. I always recommend Linux Mint, but it is such a culture shock coming from Windows that a lot of people, you look at it and you're like, well, I don't like this, this, and this. And then you look at other Linux distributions thinking that that might solve your problem. At least that's what my initial thoughts were when I switched over. And then I came to the conclusion that I don't, it's okay if I don't like these things. Linux allows you to basically change whatever you want. You don't like the desktop environment, change it. You don't like the file manager, change it. You don't like your login manager, change it. It doesn't matter. It's a matter of just tinkering. And that's why I've made so many Linux videos on this channel in the past six months. Just because as I've learned, I've been able to teach and help others out kind of adopt Linux. And that's the whole point. And that's kind of what this video is about is I've really enjoyed this journey so much. So when I actually go back to Microsoft Windows, uh, it's kind of a joke. I'm like, wow, I can't believe I dealt with this crap for so long. And some people even make fun of me in my streams because on my secondary PC, which I use for streaming, uh, doing my live streams, and I actually use Windows because I have an Elgato capture card, which is Windows only. And then I also have a Stream Deck, which is also Windows only. So with those components to use those, utilize those hardware, that's why I use it. So I can switch my scenes and do some other stuff. But as far as my primary purpose machine, I said gaming, but actually most of my gaming happens on my Linux box now. It's gotten to the point where you're able to do most games, except for a couple first person shooters, which they're working on anti-cheat and some other things still. But overall, I'm just incredibly happy with it. So uh, that's kind of where I've gone. That's been my journey. But your journey might look like something different. It might be a Mac a switch if you're completely heavily invested in your professional in Adobe, which probably is about maybe 5% of the people watching this video. You're probably going to have to use Mac. However, most people watching this video, you could learn Linux. You can move and actually do it. Uh, just know that it is a lot different than Windows, but just know at the end of the day, it is worth learning. It is worth using. And I wish I gave it more attention sooner uh, because I've suffered so much heartache at the hands of Windows 10 and its evil desktop environment. I, I just uh, can't get over how bad things still do. And in as part of my part-time job, I'm still supporting all my Windows systems all my professional certifications are from Windows Server. Thank you, Microsoft, for my career, and thank you for breaking things and making things difficult for users. But at the same time, uh, there's a lot better way. There's a lot stabler way. There's a lot more reliable way than to continue down the Windows path. So that's it for this video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. I definitely will receive some hate on this one, and that is okay. Uh, but for you out there watching this video, I just want to tell you, hey, there's more choices. You can stick with Windows. You can move to Mac. You can move to Linux. I don't care. I just want to let you know, you don't have to stay with Windows. And with that, a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make this video. And I'll see you on the next video.